everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it is Friday. Once again, it is July 22nd, and we're back after uh, two weeks. Last week, we had Thursday, last Thursday, we had a lightning strike here at my studio, and a bunch of equipment got fried, so we weren't able to go on last Friday. Um, we we're kind of limping along today. We're actually going pretty well today. I'm on my laptop. The big tower is in the shop. Hopefully, it's not completely fried. But we are back, and we are up, and we're very excited because we got some new stuff to roll out to you today and I'm going to be um, what are you working on snow bear today and that's going to be kind of the main subject for quite a while uh, we've been cranking away on it for the last several weeks and um, I'm really excited to start sharing it with you guys uh, mm -hmm. today we're going to be showing you I'm going to be animating live showing you how I do production and then we're going to give you guys an opportunity from after today to kind of join me over on uh, over at creature art teacher on a daily basis and or hopefully Somewhat oh, daily, semi basis. daily, semi daily, couple <clears throat> times a week, a couple times a week, uh, to join me as I as I draw and animate and everything else. But um, we've also got some cool sales going on. Uh, we've got Dustin here helping out, and we've mm. also got Nick Birch, my business partner. Hello. And Nick can explain to you a little bit more because I'm coming in cold uh, about some of the, uh, the the cool deals we got coming up. Well, first of all, uh, while people are joining, uh, I'll wait for the big announcement for a minute, but uh, we've got our summer sale going on over at Creature Art Teacher right now where everything is 30% off or more still. Uh, that's only going on about another week or so. So uh, we've got uh, all of our brushes, courses, uh, photo packs, all that stuff is 30% off or more right now. Um, but the, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and say it. The big news is that- <laughs> I'm right, excited about this. Right now, we are running the biggest sale we have ever run on annual memberships to creatureartteacher.com. Right now, we are running buy one, gift one free. So what that means is if you buy an annual membership to Creature Art Teacher, you're gonna be given the opportunity to send one to a friend for, for, for free. And family uh, member, friends, family whatever. Family member, friend, loved one, whoever you want it to be. That's over 500 hours of immediate access to over 500 hours of videos and brushes. You get everything on the site plus everything we release over the year. You both get everything on the site plus everything we release over the next year. And hey, there's nothing stopping you from maybe two people go in and split the cost. That's like getting two memberships for half price. So Actually, that's really smart. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, you can yeah. do it however you want. And then, as Aaron always already alluded to, starting next week, this is what we're really excited about, uh, annual members, he is full-blown, uh, this is going to be annual and streaming members are going to get access to this, but he's yeah. full-blown on Snow Bear right now, and basically, he's going to start streaming multiple times a week behind the scenes of Snow Bear. So if you... It, uh, yeah, it's always been our intent, you know, wanting to show you guys how, what we do, how we do it, and that was one of the big motivations behind making snow bear was not only to create content and create a short and create films like we you know we're filmmakers and that's what we want to do but we're also teachers and so we want to we wanted snow bear to become a course on how to create uh, create an animated short but we also thought while we're making it not just put together the course at the end of making the short but while we're making it why don't we share the process and so over the next 10 months, nine and a half months now, um, I'm going to be live streaming a couple times a week. Um, and you can just come in and sit with me in my studio via your end of the camera. And, um, and I'm going to draw and animate. And you're going to see how I start my shots, how I animate my shots, how the shots cut into the reel. Um, you're going to see us painting our, our shots. Uh, editing you'll see everything the entire production process that's the thing is it's not yeah. even it's not just going to be animating you might see music meetings you might see sound effect meetings you might see a whole bunch of stuff uh depending on where we're at in the process and that's only going to be available to members of creatureartteacher.com so today is intended to be kind of a taste of that so. yes so once again i, I want to make that perfectly clear nick said it a couple times but i want to make it very clear you have to be a member of our site in order to join us during the week. Today we're doing it for free. We'll still be doing our Friday streams, but they won't necessarily be Snow Bear. Yeah, exactly. Our Friday streams won't always be Snow Bear. But if you do want to watch us create Snow Bear, then you need to be a member of our site in order to do it. It's one of the benefits that you're going to get. We're trying to add value to, to our membership. So we're trying to add not just courses and everything else, but you're going to get to see 
actual productions. We want we want you to be if you get a membership to our site, we want you to get everything you possibly can. We want to give it a lot of value. And so that's what we're doing. We're rolling this out next week. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and announce it now and put a, put a time stamp on it. We are rolling out next week our Discord server, which is also going to be available to members, uh, streaming and annual members only. So if you head over to PreacherArtTeacher.com and become a member, uh, you're going to get access to that. Yeah, and the Discord is going to be a lot of fun because it's going to be broken up into, I guess, do you call them rooms, I guess? Uh, rooms or, 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 or yeah, yeah or so you know each course will have its own room basically so you can talk about character design you can talk about storyboarding or whatever but well all, and it's it's just going to be a lot of fun i'm really excited about that uh youtube question are your snow bear live streams going to be at the same time every, all the time you're going to kind of do it more impromptu right or is it gonna yeah be they're going to be somewhat pr impromptu but it's basically as I come into work, I'm going to be turning the camera on, and, and it's just going to be part of my... i got to be careful not to scratch myself in the wrong places and pick my nose and all that stuff. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, basically, I'm just going to be turning the camera on, and I'm going to sit down, and, and I'm just going to be starting... You know, I'll be working. And as I work, I'll try to explain as much as I can. I'm not going to be able to answer questions all the time, but it's basically... It's, it's as if you're sitting in the room with me and looking over my shoulder. And you're going to get to see how I how I go about my business each day. So, I mean, drawing wise. <laughs> Abby, Abby Lee just commented and said, "You had me at Discord server, guys. Jeez." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're really excited about all that stuff, and um, and we're gonna you know, I, throughout today, you know, we'll go back and, and mention it again because I know we'll get more people coming on as we go. But um, but let me explain a little bit about what we're doing today. So for the last several weeks, uh, I've been working on Snow Bear, and I'm doing everything um, uh, as far as the art side of it goes, except for the painting. We're all going to be doing the painting, the character painting. But as far as you know, creating the layouts, doing the backgrounds, do it, and doing the animation, I'm I'm trying to do all of that. I kind of want to. I've always had this dream of being able to do a short on my own, and so we're doing it. I'm still hoping to get to squeeze in an in between or two. Yes. Oh, Nick, yeah, you definitely will. You definitely will. Um, but uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've been uh, you know, doing backgrounds and doing shots. And since I'm the only one doing it, I decided, because we've already got a story reel, all the storyboards are done for the entire uh, short, I'm basically starting on shot one and I'm working right through to the end. I've just decided to do it that way. So I'm up to today, I'm going to be working on shot 10. I'm on my 10th shot. And I'm in a section right now where we establish our polar bear. That's how, so in the beginning, we show our landscape, it's very desolate, it's very windy, it's very cold. We establish that, and then we establish our snow bear, and he comes walking into his shot, and we see that he's looking around. And so in this section that I'm doing right now, we see him walk into this new shot, and this fox raises its head up. And he sees the fox, and he gets excited. To, oh, maybe he can make a friend, and the, so the fox comes towards him, and there's a couple things that happen. I'm going to show you these shots. So let me, uh, let me jump over to shot five. Because that's the first shot uh, in this section. So our bear over here on the right, you'll see that he comes walking in. We've got this hillside covered in snow. And you'll see like the grass waving in the wind. I've had to animate all this stuff. You can see down on the timeline all the different drawings on the bottom. Oh, there's our dog marking. But anyway, if I play the shot, you'll see and he's not painted yet. But Snow Bear walks in. And then over on the left, ooh, you thought it was a little rock. But no, it's, there's a fox sleeping there under the snow. And he raises his head up. So that's the first establishing shot for this section. He walks in, Snowbear walks in, and the fox raises his head. And the next shot, A6, that's when we cut in tight on Snowbear, and we see he notices, he, he looks up and he gets excited. He looks at the fox and goes, oh, hey. You know, he looks and gets excited. Hey there, bear. Yep, and so then we cut to his point of view, his POV, his point of view. And so we see the fox up on the hill now. Now we're seeing that same hill that we started with, but now we're seeing it from the bear's point of view. And we see the fox raise his head up, stands up, and then he comes and takes a closer look. So he gets up, and he comes in and steps into the light, comes out of the shadows. Right now, nothing's painted right now, except for the backgrounds. And he gets a closer look at at the snow bear or at the polar bear so at that on shot a8 which i did yesterday we cut in tight on the polar bear 
and it's very subtle, but we see, oh, he gets excited. You see his expression widen, like, oh, he's going to make a friend. And then from there, we cut to A9, and we see the fox kind of back up, and turn around, and run away. So he's scared of the polar bear, and he runs off. So now what we're animating today is A10. And this is our polar bear's reaction where he's in the beginning, we're picking up on the last time we saw him smiling, and then he's gonna come, like he's gonna kind of come backwards and he's gonna get sad, and then he's gonna turn and he's gonna walk away, and that'll take us to the next section. So this this is the last shot of this section. By the way, I'm, get, I'm getting a couple questions related to the membership thing and also to Snow Bear, so I'm sure. going to hit a couple of them real quick. Uh, one is that, don't worry, we're definitely still going to have some surprises in Snow Bear. Even if you're, even if you're watching our regular streams, there's still going to be, a, we're not going to give away the end. Oh, no, we're not giving away. I, we only, you're only going to see about a third of Snow Bear. That's all I'm going to share with you guys. Maybe half. But it's yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, oh, yeah, actually, yeah. Maybe maybe about with half. The, with the end, with the members, you know, that are seeing the process, I think they'll see more than that. But yeah. Yeah, it, because it, there there are some twists and turns in the story that we're not going to reveal. Yeah, yeah. There, we, I've actually gotten that question a few times. You know, it's like, oh, I really want to see this, but I also want to be surprised when you guys finish Snow Bear. Trust me, you will. Yes. You will. We're not so, going to reveal everything. So that's the first thing, and then the second thing, and I think this is an important point. Uh, this uh, buy one, gift one special that we're running right now, that is available to existing members. So there is now an option to renew early on the website. And if you do that, you'll automatically get the gift membership added to your cart and you can go ahead and send it to whoever you want. So there you go. There you go. So I'm just waiting for the computer to catch up. It does this every once in a while because I've got a few tabs open. But what's going to happen is what I've done is I've taken, um, if you remember in shot eight, where he, it's the close up where he comes forward and his, and his expression widens. Um, if you remember that shot, um, I'm just basically reversing it. So I'm starting with where he ends up and I'm going back to the original pose, but just the position. I'm not going back to the actual pose. I'm actually gonna change the, the look. So I just want to go back, I want this subtle, this subtle movement backwards, but I don't want that same expression. So I'm just going to redraw the expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and start to draw. Let me come in here. There we go. You get, for some reason, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. That's what's wrong. That's what I want right here. So let's see. Here is this. there. All right, so now I'm up on my top layer. This is my main animation layer up on top. And what we're going to do is I just want him, the cheeks will basically be the same. Someone wants to know, are you going to be using Krita for Snow Bear? No. I'm using, we are using TV Paint. We plan on trying out the animation in Krita on a future stream, but Snow Bear is being done in a more advanced animation software that's TV paint's more intended for full-scale production. Exactly. So what I'm doing right now is I'm tracing over. If I go back and forth, you can see the movement. He goes backwards a little bit. He shrinks. He goes back in perspective. And there's parts that aren't going to change. So I'm able to trace over them like the nose. The things that are going to change are the expression, the, the eyebrows. So I'm keeping this fairly tight. You know, when you get really big like this, I'm, I'm, uh, as far as the, uh, the final line goes, we are, we're not doing what's called cleanup. We're not going in and redrawing everything. We're just going to keep my, my drawings. I want to be able to save a step and time. And so I'm trying to keep my animation very clean. Yeah, an animation cleanup is the costliest department, right? Correct? It is, it's yep. It's the largest. Yep, it's the most time consuming. You're basically taking tens of thousands of drawings and drawing them very pristine and it just takes time to do that. So here's where I want to kind of come in and 
I'm going to drop his eyelids down a little bit. I'm going to change the shape of them because what's going to happen, the eyelid itself is going to push in a little. The drawing that I'm, I'm going over right now, I'm actually going to get rid of that drawing once I've, I've, I've come up with this drawing. Oh, speaking of TV paint, if you are a member to our website, you do get a discount on TV paint as well. So that's another benefit you get. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can see how, see how the eyebrow shape has changed? I'm bringing those eyelids down just a little bit. Now the biggest change is going to be in the mouth. Are you in touch with uh, John uh, Pomeroy? Uh, I know John Pomeroy and we see each other every once in a while, but no, I, I'm not in touch with him per se. Uh, uh, have you heard of his uh, Art Academy? Yes. Yeah, he launched that recently, actually. Yeah. So you can see I'm giving him a much sadder kind of look. Nothing sadder than a sad polar bear. I had a dream about a polar bear last night. You did? Yeah, we were, um, it was chasing me. Uh, we, <laughs> we, well, we've been watching, because um, the new season, one of the newer seasons is on Netflix, that show Alone. Have you seen that? Where yeah, they, I've been watching. It's funny, we've been watching it too. Where they have to survive, and, yeah. you know, and, they're, and they're in grizzly territory, and I think because of Snow Bear, that my brain just turned that into a polar bear, and... Yeah, I'm totally convinced I would do what if I I just don't I don't have the uh, I don't have all of the the skills the the survival skills but I'm totally convinced I could do the the alone time out there yeah the the being okay in isolation yeah are yeah, you sure are you sure the polar bear wasn't just trying to chase you down to uh, talk to you about uh, the extended uh, car insurance <laughs> car, warranty? car warranty what I don't get about alone is you know without spoiling it we're like eight episodes in and people are just now like hey i should start putting some trout lines and some I, 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 we were talking about the same thing like, i put out like 10 fish traps and 11 trout lines like day one just yeah i, mean, I think obviously i know everything takes time and i think can, some of the guys are 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 they're trying to save face they like they want to they want to tap out like they can't handle the loneliness but so but they that they set they set it up so they don't look wimpy on camera right um there was one guy on there i don't know i just i don't want to spoil it but yeah, yeah. It's, i like the show don't get me wrong it's just i love it so you can see i might have pushed it a little too far let me see we'll, we'll look at this usually i'll thumbnail this because but because it's only one expression that i'm really trying to hit i figured i would just go for it uh, Dylan on YouTube asks, hey, Aaron, in the shot, will the leading edge change with the change of expression, or does it not change because the head is stationary? The leading edge? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I don't know what you mean by that. Yeah, maybe, uh, Dylan, maybe... Because the head isn't stationary. That. He's actually dropping back. Yeah, explain explain what you mean, Dylan, because I don't I'm not following. I'm gonna drop his ears down a little lower. Do you have any friends who worked on Enchanted? I have no friends. <laughs> on Chan on Enchanted? Yeah. Yes. James Baxter. James Baxter. Baxter. All right, so you can see, I'm going to let those cheeks be where they are. Uh, Beagle Nation on YouTube asks, how long is Snow Bear going to be? Ten minutes. I know it doesn't sound like much, but for one person, to, well, it's actually Nick and I have done story together. Um, and uh, we've, had a, we've also had some story input from other artists 
along the way. Um, but I've done all the storyboarding and and uh, and then ultimately we'll do all the animation and everything. So it, it's just it's a lot, but you know, ten minutes is you know it's still hey, it's one eighth of a feature. <laughs> There's no dialogue either, so that helps with the process. And uh, Chelsea Henry from uh, Facebook asks, uh, speaking of Netflix, uh, have you seen the new animated movie, The Sea Beast? Uh, the writing and animation for this movie is amazing. Yes. I have not yet seen it. Yeah, I know the director and I know the head of story and uh, it's it's pretty darn good. I mean, it's a it's, good movie. It's Chris Williams, you said, right? Yeah, it's Chris Williams. One of the things I love about it is um, it's uh, they've really taken kind of a they've really done their research on their source material as far as you know doing a good pirate movie and uh, you know the high seas and all that and it really the characters are really great. Very honest. Um, it's just, you, it's really good. Sorry. It's all right. How do you maintain your health while drawing for long animation hours? I don't. What's I'm health? fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I try to get up and walk speaker. around. I get, I get up and, you know, we try to get out. Um, we live on a, on a wildlife refuge. I try to get out in the woods when I can. People are saying this, this change like this from smiley to sad would make a good meme. And, <laughs> yeah. and someone posted, when you take the pizza out and it's burnt. <laughs> well, that's so funny because the other one was, I, I posted it and it says, when you pull the pizza out of the oven and it's him getting excited, smiling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's basically, there's our change right there. So I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to get rid of this one. Let me get right here. X. Actually, I can get rid of that, this whole layer now. So now... That's basically it. Oh, oh, and that we're animating into that, into that expression, and then he's going to turn and walk away. <laughs> Martin Berger comments saying, "Shot number ten is called the pizza is ready, and shot eleven is called, but it is burnt all over. So no <laughs> lunch for Glenn, the polar bear." <laughs> there it is. So two drawings, and there's an entire shot. You know, this is this is called pose to pose animation. We're literally just doing two poses. It's our start, our 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 where he sinks in. Well, it's not really two poses because he's got to walk out as well. Uh, so uh, Sandoval asks, uh, how long has the idea for Snow Bear been with you? Before you decided to put uh, the idea to paper and make your short film, we Nick and I started talking about it. I thought of Snow Bear in the shower like about six years ago, five years ago. Yeah, I think it's. And then we a... started. And I mentioned it to Nick, and then we started talking about it, and so yeah, it's been about six years. But we started drawing for it almost immediately. Doing little drawings here and there, but yeah, as far they started as, as little story sketches. It's you know, yeah. full production has literally only been two weeks. Yeah, you know, it took it took a long time before we got it boarded, all storyboarded. Okay, so now what I want to do is now I want to jump ahead. I'm going to do some rough, very rough drawing. So I'm going to put those on a different layer because I'm going to draw over those. I'm going to move that layer underneath. I should have just kept the old the old one. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm going to go, and I don't want that to be on a hold. I want that to be none. There we go. So what I want here, I'm going to turn that on. So I've got my onion skin on. So as he turns... 
I'm actually going to turn. I'm going to make this brush really big. And we're going to knock it back. Uh, opacity. So what I want is him to start walking away. Got a little bit of a delay in my drawing. It's kind of annoying. You'll notice I'm keeping this super rough. I'm going to I'm going to draw over this. So he's going to turn and walk away and exit the shot. Uh, from Dar uh, Darnell Robinson. Hey, Aaron. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I want to know what would be a good way to approach animating a character singing? A good way to approach an a character singing? The yes. first thing you got to do is get your dialogue track set. Which and then. The music, essentially, right? The yeah, well, get your dialogue track laid in there. Then you got to figure out your timing track. So you're, you're getting your dialogue in there is going to give you your lip sync. But then you got to also figure out your, your timing, your, the rhythm, the beats. So what you got to do is listen to that rhythm and count it out and then take that timing and count out the frames to that timing. That way you'll know like every 15 frames is a beat or every 24 frames is a beat. Why is it that the shower is the best place to get good ideas? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's always the shower or it's always uh, um, like waking up in the morning and it, like it's right before you're fully awake. That's where I, I also get because I'm always thinking about the project that I'm working on. Sometimes I'll get ideas right before I drift to sleep, too. Yeah. Is that what you just said? Sorry, I just... No, well, for me, it's waking up or, or going to sleep, yeah. Because uh, you can't stop thinking about it, you know? Uh, Twitch question. I'm doing the watercolor course by Aaron right now on the website. Every time I use liquid frisket, it comes off with the paper, no matter how thick or thin it is, and no matter how long it's left on the paper. Any ideas why it keeps happening? You might be using bad paper. All I can think of is you're, you're not using quality, good quality uh, watercolor paper. Good quality watercolor paper, the liquid frisk won't come off. I mean, the, the paper won't come off with the frisk. You use arches, right? I do use arches, yep. So I'm drawing really big, and it's a little annoying to draw this big. I might shrink it up just so I can draw a little smaller. Actually, I think I'm going to do that. It makes it a little easier to handle. So I'm not liking what I'm seeing right now. Because on a polar bear, that nose should be way up. The bridge of the nose is way up high. There we go. So we've got a lot of people that are just joining us. I want to let them know the big news that we announced at the beginning of the stream. Um, Aaron's working on Snow Bear today, uh, which is our animated short. Uh, because we wanted to give everybody a taste of what the animation process is going to be like. But starting next week, exclusively for our annual and streaming members to Creature Art Teacher, we're going to be doing regular uh, multiple streams a week, uh, all about the behind the scenes of Snow Bear in real time as we're making it. And so uh, 
to kind of promote that, we are running our largest sale ever at Creature Art Teacher on our annual streaming or annual premium membership. If you uh, purchase a membership right now, you can gift one for free. So it's basically buy one, get one, and you can send that to a friend or a loved one, and that gets you instant access to everything that we offer on the website, plus everything that we uh, come out with over the next year. And the best part of an annual membership is everything is yours to keep. So you get streaming and download access to everything on the site, and it's all yours. So uh, check it on out over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Uh, this is not going to last forever. This is sort of like a Christmas in July sort of deal, if you will. So, yeah. so we're not going to keep this promotion running forever. So get it while you can over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. CreatureArtTeacher.com. There we go. What advice would you give a new animator? You know, it's, it's be patient. Um, animate. Don't get caught up in mechanics. That's the biggest thing. You want to animate what a character is thinking, the emotion, what they're, what they're feeling, and that that'll really dictate the the action of what of, of what they you know what they're going to be doing. In this case, he's super sad. I want I want to animate that he's sad. So I'm you know it's he's kind of slumpy. He's kind of. Uh, and it really dictates the way he's going to walk out of the shot. Uh, when you're doing your rough first pass, do you mostly lead with the head of the character? I do. Yeah, it, it depends on the action, obviously. But in, in a case like this, I'm leading with the head, for sure. Okay, so coming down, I feel like his head is growing a little bit, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna isolate the head, like so. One of the things I love about TV paint is I can, I can resize right on the fly. You know, back in the old days when we were doing this on paper, if I had done that and I wanted to make that kind of change, I'd have to go to the Xerox machine and blow it down. I did that many times. Yeah. There we go. That feels better. I want to keep that ear down. So at this stage, I'm you know every everything I do really dictates what's going to happen later on. So I want to make sure, even though I'm going rough, I want to make sure everything's where it should be. I want to make sure everything's accurate. So he goes. He's happy, sad, and then turns to walk away. So let's go to our next shot. Got to get him to turn. Next shot, our next image. Right now I'm not worried about timing. I'm not thinking about timing. I'm just looking at the animation. Oh, and I 
got this question about the buy one gift one membership. Yes, if you renew, if you're an existing member and you renew early, you're renewing at your existing rate. So you're getting an even better deal if you've maybe gotten a sale in the past or something like that. Um, although it's on sale right now, but uh, if uh, you're not, you don't have to pay more, basically. Uh, Kirk Michael is asking. Hey, uh, Kirk Michael. Hey there, Kirk. Uh, have you used any reference for the bear, or are the are are his movements purely from your imagination? It's purely from my imagination, but I've done a lot of four-legged animal reference and you know observation and. Well, you've done a lot of studying polar bears over the last several months. Exactly. But this actual motion here, if that's what they're asking. Yeah. I'm trying to get it to feel like he's kind of turning away, which is why the tail is slowly showing up more and more. We'll just have a little piece right there. So as we as we play through so what I want to do is I just want to check it um, for length a YouTube question how many people on average does it take to make a short film and what does it cost asking as an animation student what are the typical costs roughly? Um, I don't know what the typical costs are well, I mean, that can vary all over the map. So right. So if you're doing everything yourself, then the cost could be zero. Exactly. If you're hiring music and score uh, like we're going to do, uh, well, that's going to depend on the level of the person that you're hiring. Uh, everybody has different rates. As far as how many people work on a short, that can also vary. I mean, I've seen everywhere from a solo operation, basically like we're, what we're doing, all the way to treating it like a production and having 30, 40 animators on it. So again, that depends on your your budget and availability. Let's do this. I just got a message from Steve. Steve. Saying that uh, it's coming through like I'm not mic'd. Can everybody hear me okay? My mic's on. Let me see. If I play You're this. the audio's coming through. Let me know in the comments if you can hear me speaking or not, or do I sound far away? Or Yeah, sound like you're a bit far off. Can you move the mic closer to you? I mean, it's two inches from my face. Oh. We have a new setup today because of the, the lightning strike issue, so. Yeah. So here's a rough, very, very rough pose test. But this is basically, a, you see his face drop and then he turns to walk away. Now some people say they can hardly hear me. It's my mic. Actually, I'm gonna have this, this way. <clears throat> I'll move even closer to the mic and we'll, we'll go from there. Try again. Hey, everybody. This is new mic test. New mic test. Check, I a, check. I have a feeling that mic might not be even be working. No, Much it's better. working. Much I better. think it's just... Actually, it might be a little... Oh, people say it's great now. So Good. Okay. I fiddled with the dials a little bit. So there's our timing. And what's going to happen, we're going to get a cross dissolve between the end of this shot and going into the next shot where we see him in a new situation. So this is basically his timing. So you can see it's very rough. 
But this is how I do every <clears throat> shot. I got to, you know, you figure this out. And then it's really, at this point, the, this is the tough part of the animation. It's a simple shot. I shouldn't say it's simple, it's less hard. Every shot in the animation is hard. There's less hard ones and more hard ones. But here, it, it starts out very, you know, the whole first, oh, 32 frames of this shot is all about his expression. And then he turns and he walks away. So that's what I'm going to be working with right now. And I'm trying to decide if that, if that's a little too pouty, that expression. I like the eyes. I'm just wondering if the mouth is a little too, too pouty. I guess it, it's clear. I kind of like it. Let me come. Let me look at it again. You're asking if it's too much? Yeah, I'm just wondering, I'm trying to decide whether or not those the corners of the mouths are down, the mouth is down too I much. I mean, it's definitely an extreme, but I think for right now, I, I'd yeah, be inclined I, to I, leave. I would rather err on clarity. Yeah. I mean, it's not bothering me. I'm just going to move, and I'm going to be moving through that expression. It might be in the eyes, too. If I change the eyes a little bit. I just want to see something real quick. If I give him a little bit more of a half eyelid. Oops. Ah, he only has half an eyelid. <laughs> I want to see if that's going to make him look too dopey if I bring the eyelid down a little bit. Uh, it's a little dopey looking. Let me try the other one. It's getting into a realm of, oh, you got to be kidding me, kind of expression. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Which yeah. could yeah, also keep... still work, but that's yeah, not, the, just, not that's the, not the not emotion the you're going for. Now, it's all in the eyes. This is one of the things I teach in my uh, expression course and character design course. Is so much. There's so much subtlety in the eyes. Now the key is to keep the, the pupil from getting covered up, the iris from getting covered up by the eyelid. feels better. Oh, I just got a text of my grandkids watching this live stream. Oh, oh that's awesome. Well, of course, hey there, kids. Of course, they're in the next room watching. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they could literally be watching it from the doorway. Yeah. <laughs> They're just so lazy. I always feel like somebody's watching, watching me. Michael Jackson sang that part. Yep, he sang the back, the, the best part of the song. You mean? Yeah. <laughs> what was the name of that artist? I can't remember his name. Ah, uh, I know it too. It's on the tip of my tongue. Who's watching me now? The IRS? <laughs> 
All right. That's our breakdown right there. Or I mean, our, our change. I decided to try to... I like the eyes a little bit better now. You know, these, this, so a lot of times these are the hardest shots to animate. It's not the big mechanically complex ones. It's these getting just the right expression. You know, that acting. And when you're drawing this big, it's, you know, want to make sure you're getting the right uh, anatomy and everything. And Rockwell. Rockwell, thank you, yes. In the comments. Thank you, Twitch. That's where I saw it first. I think I was in high school when that came out, or it may have been college, my first year in college. When did, what year did that come out, I wonder? I, I graduated high school in 1986. Uh, that's going to be in the right ballpark, because obviously yeah. it was right of, similar around the time to when Michael Jackson was on top of the world with Thriller. So that's yeah. going to be 84, 85, 86, all in there. Um, hey, Aaron, this is not about Snow Bear, but have you ever used black wing, wing pencils? And if you have, how do they feel to you? I love them. Yes, I've, I have used them, and I love them. So what I'm going to do here is uh, you can see my onion skin is on, and I want a nice even sink, you know, as he, as he sinks back into his pose. And so I'm just going to... Oh, Someone I'm gonna asked how up. many <clears throat> frames per second is Snow Bear going to be. It's going to be 24 frames per second. Yeah, 24 frames a second. Which is the standard for animated feature films. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be doing ones, twos, fours, sixes, eights in some cases. And what that means is, and sometimes I'll be holding drawings for, you know, I'll be doing a drawing for every frame or I'll be do doing a drawing for every two frames. Or in other cases, I'll be doing a drawing for, you know, every six or eight frames, you know, depending on how slow the action is. In this case, this whole thing will be on twos. Martin Berger is asking, how is your equipment after the lightning strike? Well, the computer's in the shop. The computer's not working, so we're using the laptop. This is actually the laptop. We, the other laptop that I had, we actually burned that one out, or at least one of the ports. We burned the port out in, uh, in Austria. So we bought <laughs> a new Mac laptop while we were in, uh, uh, in, in Vienna, right? Yep. Yeah. And, um, and so, oh no, no, we bought the new one in, uh, in uh, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yeah. Mm, yes, you're right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and this thing works great. It's just, uh, it can't quite, for some reason, the, the, uh, my, um, my, uh, the, the Premiere file is a little wonky on it. I can't play it back. Yeah, we've been having issues with the Premiere, and I, I think it has something to do with moving the files from the one machine to the other, and it's on an external drive, because... Because this Mac can definitely run Premiere, because I have essentially the same model and don't have the issues. I think it's just something corrupt with the file. We'll, we'll yeah. Just haven't had the chance to work through it. But basically, we're working fine. I'm able to... I got a lot of animation done this week. Basically, everything I showed you I, in, at the beginning of this stream, I did this week. Creature art teacher, do you all, uh, you all are funny. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> funny looking. Do you have uh, a favorite stand-up comedian? Ooh. Oh, man. I, you know, I've really gotten into a lot of comedians lately. Um, I do have a few favorites. I mean, you're classic. I know what that is. So many. Been. So many good ones. What's that? You've always said Billy Conley. Billy Conley is, yes, absolutely. Billy Conley has always been my favorite. I'm so sad that he's not doing it anymore. Um, poor guy's got Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but um, yeah, he's quite literally, I think, one of the funniest men ever. You know, he's up there with Robin Williams. And 
Um, and I always loved Robin Williams as well. When I was a kid, I loved Foster Brooks. Now, a lot of you out there listening have no idea who Foster Brooks, Brooks is. Look him up. Foster Brooks played a drunk, basically. He was a comedian, and he did a lot of the Dean Martin roasts and stuff like that. Um, and he would always do it as if, as if he was drunk. And he played the, the perfect drunk. And the, the, the funniest part is that he never drank. He never drank any alcohol, but he played an amazing drunk. Foster Brooks. I loved him as a kid. Yeah, one of my one of my favorite specials of a comedian has to be um, "Why Are You Crying" from George Lopez. Oh yeah, <laughs> you remember? You remember? You remember? You remember? <laughs> do you have a tutorial? Sorry, <laughs> uh, do you have a tutorial on when to use ones, twos, threes, or fours, etc.? You know, I don't have a tutorial on that, and I don't even know if I've mentioned that. In any of my other courses, that's a really good. I mean, I have mentioned it, but I've never really demoed it. Yeah, I don't think you've really. I mean, you've mentioned I've never, that I've ones never are, fast into, actions are always on ones. Yeah, know? and that's basically it. It's like you know, when it strobes, go to ones. If it doesn't strobe, then you're good. But when do you, when you can get away with fours or whatever? I mean, that's a totally different, or at least your thought process yeah, of when. Yeah, you, you know, get when away. I when I get a, when I'm getting away on fours and sixes, that's when the action is super slow you're basically just settling into a pose and so just to save drawings i i go to fours let me give you an example i can show you right here uh, shot six this one so at the end he actually goes to fours and then it holds for 14 frames but i i'm all on twos all the way through and then it goes to, to a four and then it goes to and then it holds at the end so this is all twos and then it just kind of he just slides right into a hold. And, you know, you don't feel it, and the acting works pretty well. Everything works well. It doesn't yank you out of it. So that's the kind of time. Those are the times where I'll go into a different, uh, you know, different timing. Oh, I always feel that song's in my head now. Yep. Somebody's watching me. And I got no privacy. <clears throat> All right, so eyes are drooping. I want to take a survey. How many of you out there were born in the 2000s? Oh, I still boy. find, we were talking about this the other day. I still find this fascinating, although I shouldn't. I'm just, should understand that I'm old. But um, I was, Looking at, I'm talking to my daughters, my stepdaughters the other day, and all of them were born in the 2000s, and I realized they have no idea. And I say, you know, I call it the 1900s. When we say the 1900s, it sounds old, but it really is the 1900s. None, of, you know, people born in the 2000s obviously have no idea what the 1900s were like. And um, I was born in 1968, so I had plenty of the 1900s in my time. And so I'm just curious. I'm putting a poll up on YouTube. Yeah, how many of you were born in the 2000s? Well, it lets me put four options, so. My father was born in 1939. Uh, Zoji says 70s. Yeah. The er my earliest memory is 1971. Oh, in the poll I put before 70s. I meant to put 70s and before. So if you were born in the 70s and before, click on that. Because it goes before 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, which would mean we skipped the 70s. But <laughs> Nick was born in 1980, right? Yep. Uh, Melissa Fortune on Facebook says, nope, no. Nope. Not me, born in the 80s. Born in the 80s. And uh, Darnell Robinson says 1989 myself. Nick Hiesel says 70s. Kirk Zimmerman is 80s. Uh, Candace Honesty is uh, 91. I'm 1990. Yeah, Dustin's 90. And actually, speaking of 1990, Mike uh, Fenster is also a 1990 kid. Just like me. Right on. 
And uh, you got a 1969 on is, Twitch. Uh, 1969. I got you beat by a year. <laughs> 1969 was a good year. That's the year we, we landed on the Ooh, moon. 1950 on Twitch. Oh, 1950. You got me beat. Wow. Natalie Fetko was born in 2000. Uh, Cora Dawson, 90s. Uh, Leon Bulwer, uh, 83. Erica Bay's 80s. Frankie Bay, 1977. Same year, Star Wars. 77. I went to. I remember going to see Star Wars. I saw Star Wars in the theater, and when I was nine years old, 1977. Caster says he was born 1992. Emma Judson, 1980. My parents were 43 and 41. So their parents in the in the tens, which seems impossibly long long ago, and not just three generations. Uh, Shelly Guerrero says early 60s. Right on. I love it. I like to see, because it, it's funny, because it sounds like we've got a much wider base um, in our live streams. When I do my, when we do our, like, when we go and, and do our, our lessons uh, live, like when I do, uh, like, uh, uh, conferences and the stuff we did in Europe, I would say most everybody was young. Yeah, most everybody. I, we yeah. had a few. You know, we had a few people my age. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, not as old as you. Yeah, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> basically, you're right. Now, how's the uh, quality of the stream looking so far in your end, Nick? Good, as far as I can tell. We're using a whole new setup, so hopefully the stream is working. Nobody seems to be, other than the microphone issue, nobody said anything. It looks just like a normal stream. Awesome. So here you can see him kind of sink down. Sinks down. I think what I want to do is I'm going to put a drawing here. Make that six. I'm going to turn this one on. There, we'll do that. Because I get an in between into this. Yeah, I'm really liking this new setup that we that we got going on, on here. Yeah, me too. Yeah, because before. You guys all don't have to fight over the mouse. All the we did before was all on the one, one computer, on the one uh, Mac Pro. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's not a bad thing to have both things running at once. But when, if, like, say we need to fix a filter or say we need to move the camera somewhere, I would have to go, hey, uh, can, I, can I take over real quick? <laughs> yeah. Always having to... Hop on, hop on the computer. Just wait, wait for my turn to hop on. Are the cam links going straight into your laptop, Justin? Or are they going uh, yes. into Yes, the cam link is going straight into my uh, computer. Because the only thing will be in the future when we do multiple cameras, we'll have to figure all that out. Now, what we really need to do is just get uh, a, f a couple of USB hubs. So what I'm doing here is I'm just roughing it. Whoa, whoa. For whoa. anyone on YouTube that wants to respond to our poll in which decade were you born and may have joined late, uh, if you were born in the 70s, it's supposed to say 70s and before. You can go ahead and click that. And I'm going to be closing that poll in just a minute. So five more minutes, everybody. Five more minutes. I've had 194 responses so far. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because one of the things I find is I'll, I'll make pop culture references and not even think about it and realize I'm really dating myself. Uh, when did you switch your onion skin color from green to red? Just curious. Uh, I did that the other day because the green wasn't showing up, so I decided to use red. Is that because you're going against such blue backgrounds and stuff? Yeah, exactly. And that was uh, Erica that asked that question. Yeah, good, good hi, Erica. 
And uh, Leon uh, Bulwark asks, uh, about that Europe trip, what were the biggest highlights from that trip? I loved uh, Austria. I lo- well, I loved, I loved everywhere we went. Don't get me wrong. So for those of you that are listening that were there and not in Austria, I loved being with you guys as well. I, what I loved about Austria was just that landscape. I loved being up in the mountains. And uh, we went to the zoo there. And uh, that zoo was just really, really awesome. I want to go. Yeah, it was, it was pretty darn cool. And um, hey, we went. We met Martin Berger. Yeah, I wish I was there to meet him too. <laughs> but um, I loved Austria. I loved Vienna. I loved the um, you know the 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 accessibility of the 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 Natural History Museum along with the zoo being right there. Um, there were just things that I really liked about it. Uh, as far as you know, we'll probably go back to Vienna. I like Berlin a lot. I liked Amsterdam. I loved Amsterdam, actually. Um, I, you know, I loved all of it. It's hard to say that, uh, you know, I met a lot of new people that I've been wanting to meet for a long time. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it was cool. One of the cool things, one of the coolest things is that there were, there were all places that I've never been. I've been to a lot of, I've been to 26 different countries and, um, and these were new ones. Yeah, all four countries this time you hadn't been to, which was really cool. And Martin says, uh, you have to meet the, the Wachau. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, and you'll love that place. It is one of my favorite places too. Spelled W A C H A U. Wachau. 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 You alright? I, I don't know. Oh. The Wachau Valley in a. Uh, near the, the Danube River. You okay? I'm. Mumbler! Just trying to trying to pronounce this properly. Yeah, here's that that valley that he's talking about. It's been on a smaller screen. But oh wow! Yeah, that looks gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm just roughing in that turn here. Hey, Dustin, we're, uh, I, I know we normally do this. This is just a question. We're streaming, our stream is going out at 720p, but we can do 1080p, right? Pardon? Our stream is going out at 720p. Uh, yes, that's the current. Uh, we can do 1080p, right? Uh, we could, but I just wanted to play it. Play no, no, for today, I'm just saying, yeah, yeah in the future, we should try yeah, it. I'm, yeah, I really want to uh, see how far we can push it as far as like amping up the bit rate and uh, the resolution scaling. Just see, just see how far we can go with it. What do you think? Yeah, I say 1080p is probably as high as we would need to go on a stream. Yeah. But. So here I'm just trying to get that head turn. So again, for those people that are just joining us, what, what Aaron's doing today, this is our animated short snow bear that we're working on. And uh, today we wanted to give everybody here on YouTube and Twitch and Facebook uh, sort of a taste of the process. He, this is shot A10, the 10th shot in the, uh, in the, in the short. Yeah. Uh, we're about, what, 50 seconds in? With yeah, this is about 50 seconds in right here. With about nine minutes of animation ahead of us. And uh, starting next week, over on our website, Creature Art Teacher, we're going to start be, uh, be doing multiple streams a week. Uh, but those are only going to be available to members of our website, creatureartteacher.com. And uh, that's going to be multiple streams a week of behind the scenes on the making of Snow Bear. So... You head over to creatureartteacher.com and become either an annual or monthly streaming member. You'll get access to those streams 
And also next week, we are launching our Discord channel, and you'll get access to that as well. Uh, Martin's uh, asking, have you tried the pencils yet? Yes, I love them. I love them. I haven't been able to use them a lot because we basically, I did a little bit of drawing for a, uh, an auction that we had recently. Um, but then I've, I just went right into Snow Bear, so I've been doing a lot of digital work. So you want to hear the results of the poll? Yeah. With 281 votes, 15% uh, of the people watching were born in the 70s or before. 16% were born in the 80s. 30% were born in the 90s. And 38% were born in the 2000s. Well, there you go. So I'm, it's, it's Now, the 2000s holds. covers two decades. so It does, but it's still, it's still after 1999 is basically what I'm saying. Yep. Yep. So that's almost forty percent. Yeah, that's what I was curious about. Which means sixty percent weren't, depending on how you look at it. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's gone to the point now where to yeah. look at a card, all they need to do is just look, look to see what if it's a, a, a one or a two that's starting the year. Yeah. The, yeah, and you're when you're getting the carded. Card. Yeah. So there, so now I've broken it down a little bit. Now what I can do is have him break down a little, put those on sixes. So we get a little bit of a pause before he walks out. Yeah, someone says, yeah, it's wild to me that someone born in the year 2000 is 22 years old this year. Yeah. I, me too. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I'm, turning, I'm turning 32 this year. Mm -hmm. and, there we uh, go. Zemji's asking, are you animating shots in chronological order? Uh, what's the thinking behind your approach? Yeah, I'm doing everything in chronological order only because I everything is ready to go. And I thought, okay, well, it's... I just figured I'd start at the beginning and work my way to the end. You know, usually when we're working on a big production, we've got a lot of people working on it. And so we divvy out parts, different parts to different people. So, you know, a production is done, put together more like a, like a puzzle. You know, you're taking all the pieces and putting them together. In this case, since I'm the only one doing it and the whole thing is ready to go, I figured I would just start at the beginning and, and work towards the end. Now, granted, you know, as I get further along into the production, my drawing of the character will theoretically get better and better. So I may find myself coming back and uh, um, redoing some shots. But so far, everything's feeling pretty good. Would you, um, if, in a production, was it really just efficiency? How they, was there a rhyme or reason to what shots happened first? Or was it just... Yes, it was whatever was... It was basically, it was the first thing, that, you know, you, we would do a screening... And um, out of that screening, we would get together with the executive, whoever's in charge, and we would we'd talk about story, and we would decide, you know, this part, you know, this section right here is looking really solid now. We have some story changes, but we don't think this section will change. So let's go ahead and put this section into production, uh, and maybe this section and this section. The rest of the movie, uh, we're going to go back and we're going to make some story changes, and we're going to reboard. But while we're reboarding these new sections, the sections we've okayed into production, those are going to go into production. So, so with that, those sections would go into layout, and they would work those out and figure out the, the staging, the backgrounds. Once that was done, they would they they would go into they'd get broken up, and they would go to background painting department where they would obviously paint the, the backgrounds. But then uh, they would also go to animation because you don't need a painted background to do animation. So then we would get them an animation, and then you'd go ahead and start in animating. Now, as far as animation goes, once those layouts were approved into animation, then it became the supervisors of each character to decide which animator was going to get which shots. And then they just they get done one shot at a time, and then get cut into the reel one piece at a time. You know, one thing that occurred to me, Aaron, and this is just this is a question as much as it is, I guess, a half a suggestion or not. Um, 
in when you were drawing an animation, there's the 16 field paper, right? But that's not the exact same as the camera safe. So you would sometimes draw beyond camera safe, right? And that allows. Yeah, they, they, they indicated the, the layout artist would indicate where where we needed to draw. Right. It. But what I, what I was going to say is that would allow because if you drew a little bit outside of the camera frame, you know, you could continue the action a little bit out of the camera. Yeah. In theory, that allows you to adjust. Hey, let's pull out a little bit. Right. Right. If we wanted to. We're not yeah, going to exactly. have that option here. No, um, actually, we won't. And, uh, and so if we do want to pull out, then I'll have to, if we do want to widen the shot. Now, granted, the, the, the advantage that we have right now is that I've, I've storyboarded it and the staging that I ultimately think we should animate it. Yeah, yeah. And so like this shot right here that I'm animating now, um, if you look at the reel, it's actually a much wider shot. Gotcha. But since we already went in tight on him, and the shot where he gets excited, I didn't. I didn't want to pull out. I, since we already got intimate with him, and we and we're going to see him get sad next. I don't want to remove us from the shot, so I decided to stay in tight rather than than to widen the. No, shot. I guess my thinking. This was more of a production thinking. I guess I'm wondering, and I'm not saying it's necessary or even that we should. But if we wanted to do like little camera drifts or anything like that, we would have to have. We'll have to indicate where the, where the camera is at. Right, so yeah, something to think about because you're doing 16 by nine as the actual ratio of the final production, right? Exactly, but I'm already trying to work in our our, our moves, right? Right. So no, I got it. so I, I I look at the shot before I go to make the layout, mm -hmm. and if there's a move, if we've already indicated a move, then I figure out how big that move is. I actually go to the story sketch that I created. And I look at the ratio of that, and then I equate that to the final layout. So I already give myself enough room for the moves. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, someone else asked, uh, does Creature Art Teacher have an add to wish list button? No, it doesn't. We'll probably be adding that. It's, add um, to wish list, what's that? Well, let's say I can't afford a course right now. I can add it to my wish list, and I'll get notified when it's on sale. Stuff. Oh, like okay, that. cool. Yeah, you know, or like when you go back to the website, hey, here's the course you were interested in again. I actually had one on there one time, and it was a little bit of a had a few bit of wonkiness to it. So it's in the works. Oh, and then for people, uh, I know I've mentioned the, the annual membership a lot, but you know we do have over 500 hours of courses over on our website, plus thousands of brushes and photo packs. So we have a summer sale going on as well right now. Um, if you go to creatureartteacher.com and you know for some reason an annual membership isn't in your budget right now, you can buy any of our courses a la carte. So, and that gets you downloading and streaming access to those courses. You can buy any of the brush sets a la carte. Actually, do you have that video that you created and uh, uploaded? Do we have that? Which Justin? one? The one, that, uh, the one that you made last night. Yes, but that's for the membership. He's already played that a few times. Oh, he has, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. I but, um, again. Yeah, yeah, so, but there's over 500 hours of content on the site and, um, um, also, we have, so you can buy any course a la carte, or you can get our streaming membership as well. So there's options over there. But it's, but the annual membership right now is buy one, gift one free. So, you know, if you've got a friend, there's, you guys could go in on you it together. you got a friend. Friend or a family member. You basically, you get two memberships for the price of one. That sounds great. Yeah, we've got storyboarding lessons, Procreate, uh, TV Paint, Calipag. Watercolor courses, charcoal courses, traditional, digital, perspective drawing. All kinds of stuff. I'm really excited about doing the, you know, people joining me each morning as I work. That's going to be fun. How long are you thinking you're going to go on those streams? Do you think you're going to do a whole work day? Yeah, you know, it depends. And if I, if I... Maybe go to lunch and then come if back. If I need to walk away and... If I don't want people looking at me anymore, who knows? <laughs> but no, I, 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 you know, I'd, I'd like to keep it, you know, when, on the days that I stream, just keep it open all day long. So you'll see, you know, 
what I'm doing. I might, you know, like I said, we'll take breaks for lunch and stuff, and or I might have to go out on an appointment, or you know, I take care of my dad and stuff, so I'll have to take him to the doctor sometimes. And but when I'm here and I'm working, I'll have it open. And as I, you know, as I showed you guys earlier, you know, last week I was able to get, you know, a lot of animation done. So, um, and starting next week, we got a section in here. I don't, I'm not going to show it to you yet, but I'll tell you, um, cause you're going to see it if you, if you come and join in. Um, there's a whole, I, I've always wanted to animate polar bears underwater. I, you know, polar bears, first of all, they're classified as marine, marine mammals because they live out on the pack ice. But they also are very, very good swimmers, and I love polar bears underwater. And so I thought, you know what, as he's trying, he's trying to make friends, and you know, I've got this shot of him trying to make friends with this fox, and that doesn't work. And we've got a shot in the next section where he's walking out on the ice, and we see these uh, orcas under the ice. And he actually dives in and, and tries to befriend one of the orcas. And uh, I'm gonna be animating that next week. And it's a big section of him swimming underwater and, uh, and playing with this whale, or trying to play with this whale. And uh, it's a big section. It's actually the, the, the biggest section of the entire production, or one of the biggest sections, just because there's a lot of characters in it. But um, I'll be doing that next week, and so if you want to check that out, you know, check out the membership. And, it's, and that's going to take me probably a month to animate that whole thing. Get a lot of a lot of footage in there, but it's really magical. That's the part I'm really excited about is this kind of dreamlike quality of him swimming under the ice and swimming under the water with this whale. Martin Berger asks, is the new Obi-Wan series worth getting Disney Plus? No. <laughs> I'm the curmudgeon. I'm no. in the minority here. Everyone else liked it. So I let, enjoyed it. It didn't listen blow, to me. It, didn't, it wasn't as good as I was hoping it was going to be. I will say that. I, I love Ewan McGregor. He's great as Obi-Wan. So do I. I, I absolutely love Ewan I McGregor. I thought... Uh, what's his name was great as Darth Vader, all that. And stuff I love the character, you know, with that you, you and McGregor plays. I just felt like the series, um, I feel like they phoned it in a little bit. My my personal opinion. Well, what's interesting is I read that it was originally intended to be a movie, and then oh, that's interesting. then when Han Solo didn't do well, they decided to turn it into a series, but they took the same plot as the movie and turned it into six episodes. And if you watch it it feels like that like it, it felt very much like a tv show though too well no but i mean as a two-hour movie that plot would have moved right along and you would have been like oh duh, duh, duh. but yeah true it felt like they stretched it out you know it didn't i feel a little bit like franchises are kind of like I, I i i just watched the uh uh, the Jurassic, the latest Jurassic Park movie. Yeah, I heard yeah, that's I, did, on, I heard that's practically and, unwatchable. Um, man, they're losing sight of what this thing's about. N and none of it was about dinosaurs at all. It had dinosaurs in it. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but man, I was what? It's like what? <laughs> but anyway. Oh, someone's saying there's a guy that took Obi-Wan and recut it into a two-hour movie, and it's much better. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Well, I've, I, 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 and I'm here I am doing it. I hate, you know, because I know how hard everybody works on a production, and if it doesn't do well, you work just as hard on a bad movie as you do on a good one, because I've worked on a lot of bad movies. And uh, so I, I hate bad-mouthing them, so take it with a grain of salt. Do it's you, still good. Do you have a course for painting environments like the ones painted for Snow Bear? I don't. And um, it, that's actually going to be part of our course. Uh, but I think I could do one, you know, in the meantime. But, um, yeah, no, I don't have one yet. We're also in talks with some uh, yeah. teachers that specialize we want to, in environmental. We want to do a, I'd like to do a course on layout and background together.
<clears throat> so, you know, these drawings have a lot of mileage on them. That's what we always, you know, the big drawings that have, you know, lots of lines and everything, lots of line mileage. And so each drawing is time consuming. So it's a very simple move, but it's, you just, whoops, it just takes time. What did you think of uh, Prehistoric Planet? Prehistoric planet. What was that? Was the Apple was dinosaur the, uh, one? The what? The, the Apple dinosaur. Oh, one. I loved it. Yeah, man, I love that. Yes, we decided we're going to talk like this the rest of the day. This here is the T Rex. No, wait, no. It's over here in place. So here, you know, with just a few drawings, we've got a total of like 15 drawings in here. You can, it's amazing how much you can get in 15 drawings. You get basically the gist of the entire shot. And if I pull open, let me see if I can do it. I'm not sure how well it'll come through for everyone else. But I can show you this little chunk. Um, it won't freeze up on this little chunk, but I can show you in Premiere how they cut together. This lot, tiny little piece. Let's see if this will open. So what I've got here, so remember the fox is sitting up on the hill and he's raised his head up and the, the bear notices him. So this is our little section. So he's walking along and notices him and you can see how it all cuts together. It's very quick. Walking along, looks up. The fox gets up. Curries down. Well, he gets excited. Oop, fox runs away. These and snow then, effects are just placeholder. And then this way, is the not. section that I'm animating now. So you can see that I've restaged it. There's a little teaser for what's coming next. So once again, you look it up. He comes down. Gets excited. Yeah, the, the snow effects are just, they're just overlays that we're going to do late. Oh, redo later. And then he walks off. And then this is a section where he's walking on the ice and the orcas come in. But I'm not going to show you the rest. There's a whole big section through there that's going to be really cool. But you got to, you got to wait to see that. So one more time. Whoops. Yep, there it is. It froze up on me again. There it, it's done. Well, that's all you get. <laughs> that's all you get. But there, there, so now you can see how that how that works, how they cut together. And then there he is. There's that sad section. So you can see. I wanted to stay in tight, so you get the full impact of the emotion. I decided to cut in close and then to cut wide again. Um, it, we're, we're pulling the audience out of the out of the moment by doing that. So I want to. I want you to be with Snowbear, or not Snowbear, but with. Uh, we actually named him Glenn, didn't we? Yeah, our polar bear's name is Glenn. Yeah, we named him after, after Glenn, Glenn Keane. Keen. Yeah. So now I'm just throwing in my in betweens. Someone says this is Disney level animation. That's the idea. I want this to be Disney level. And they may or may not know Aaron was with Disney for 21 years. So. Oh yeah, I was. Yeah. So I forget. Um, I was with Disney for 21 years. I worked on. Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin, Lion and the, King. the Lion King, Pocahontas, Mulan. Mulan. You directed Brother Bear. Co-directed Brother Bear, yep. And um, so I was there for quite a while. Did a lot of stuff. And uh, I've always wanted to do my own short. And uh, so Nick and I started talking about it years ago and here we are finally doing it. And doing it on, uh, someone asked the other day, you know, if I liked, uh, I was doing a TikTok live. And we were doing, I was doing digital animation, digital hand-drawn animation like this. And someone asked if I liked working this way or on paper better. And, uh, and there's definitely advantages and disadvantages to both. The biggest thing with paper is that you actually have something tangible. If you're looking at an animation as a piece of art, which it is, 
it's so nice at the end to have physical sheets of paper that you know a stack that you can pick up and flip and uh and hold in your hand and see you know see it come to life but from a practicality standpoint of actually making a production um working digitally by far in my opinion is better than paper first of all you're not killing a lot of trees there's that side of it but um but at the same you know also the efficiency that it, that it takes like for instance you know i can play this instantly right now and see it play back no matter where i am in the drawing whereas if i'm working on paper you know as i'm drawing i have to reshoot everything and sometimes a shoot can take you know up to an hour two hours to do and it just wastes a lot of time so that in itself is really efficient. You know, the onion skin process that you see here, um, I love flip, and I do actually flip back and forth um, with my arrow keys, but the onion skin really helps. It's a little bit like working with a, um, a light table, which I don't normally do, but I, when we get really tight like these drawings are, um, it's way nicer to have the onion skin. Someone says, really looking forward to seeing you draw those whales. Well, then you need to be an annual member on the website. Yep, come on over. If they come are an annual man. member, then thank you for the support. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fun. That's, uh, I'm really excited about it because I think it's going to be like, from an animation standpoint, I think it's going to be like a career milestone for me to do something like that. I've never animated anything like that. And I think it's going to be really cool. Something I've never done before. And it'll stand out, I think. Trying to get that sinking of his expression. You know, in, in a normal feature film, an animator might be lucky to get about five or six minutes of animation in a, in a movie, and that would be spread out all over the place. You hardly, you only get a few shots of continuity here and there. So to be able to do a 10 minute short all myself is super, super exciting uh, because it's all, you know, it's 10 minutes of continuity and it's 10 minutes. Are you approaching this project any differently than you approach directing Brother Bear? Um, well, directing Brother Bear, the biggest part of directing Brother Bear was the fact that the crew was, you know, I had a crew of 350 people. So, you know, you're working, I, now I didn't, I didn't work on a daily basis with 350 people. I worked with about 30 people that, and you know, and then it trickled down from there. But it's, it's a lot of, delegating and and you know uh, you know opening up you know uh, responsibilities to different people to do this or that or whatever in this case we're doing everything from a story standpoint it's not really any different because nick and i have hatched out the story and sometimes it gets heated sometimes it's you know you just you work your way through it and that's you know that's like any production but then you get to the end and, and it makes it better because you know, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, two is better than one and three is better than two. And as long as you have somebody kind of that's in charge of the creative and is there to guide it, um, when, you have, when you have four or five or six different opinions in a room and they're all equal, that's where things start to get a little crazy. But if you have two people that are, you know, together on it, or if you have three or four and someone's driving it, then then you can make it you know then you've got something great and so in this case nick and i were pretty we were pretty darned 
u unified in our vision for what we wanted to do on this. So it made the writing of it um, pretty smooth. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of the same from a story standpoint. Let me go back and reiterate. Um, but the production side of it's completely different because I'm really just doing it myself. And so I get to just kind of go through it straight through. But I'm, you know, we're cutting everything in as we, as I animate it, I'm cutting it in just like I would in a normal movie. You know, whatever the latest version of a shot is, that gets cut into the reel. So if I have rough animation, that goes in, that can replaces the storyboards. And then after the rough animation, if I have, you know, an animation that's in between, then that goes in. And then once the color is done, then that goes in. And, you know, you just kind of work your way through it that way. And the, our goal on the, for the cleanup or for the look of the film is basically this. The way you see me drawing, it's kind of it's clean, rough. That's, that's the way it's going to look in the movie. We're getting rid of the cleanup uh, phase and just keeping the rough, the rough drawing. But I'm trying to keep my drawings somewhat clean so it's not vibrating all over the place. Although I don't mind a little bit of line vibration. Because I, I like embracing the idea that it's hand drawn. Where are you planning on releasing it? Um, so, you want me to? Yeah, go for it. So, the initial plan, because of awards considerations, uh, we're hoping you know to that it'll be good enough that it's considered for some awards. Um, so, the way those rules kind of work are initially, it's got to basically play in some animation festivals. Um, so it'll be in festivals. It's got to have a theater screening. Festival, um, that's the best of all. Yep. But then after that, as soon as we're able to, we're going to make it available online uh, to our audience, to you all, uh, whether it be through YouTube or through our website. Yeah. Um, that's the plan. We also have, um, we're in the early stages because we're still a year out from it being done. But we want to do a... Uh, a road tour yeah like actually take it on the on the road and we're going to do screenings in local theaters and do like an evening with aaron blaze where we'll screen the movie do q a talk about the making of it in front of a live live audience and the plan is to hit a do like a do a tour around the united states so hit the northeast which is an area we haven't really been to chicago midwest stuff like that so that's the plan stan Let's hop on the bus, Gus. Make a new plan, Stan. You don't need to be coy, Roy. You just listen to me. All right. So I think what I'm going to do, just so you guys can see, is once I get this drawing done, I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and do an export. And I'm going to cut it into the reel so we can see how it cuts. I want you guys to see that part of the process. Which is going to be tricky. Yeah, it'll play, but it'll only play that section. So I've been having some decent luck getting it to play just this section. I just can't get it to play other sections. And that's the thing. That's one of the, the biggest satisfactions, you know, once you get over the the excitement of seeing something move when you when you do animation. The next part that I think is really fun is actually cutting shots into continuity. You know, you get it storyboarded and, you, and that's one thing, but then you start to animate those those boards and then you start cutting them together and it's like, oh my gosh, I've got a I've got a movie. That's where it starts really getting fun. I love it all when it all comes together. I love it when a plan comes together. Who is that character? Murdoch. Uh, well, it wasn't Murdoch. Oh, Murdoch, Murdoch, Murdoch was, was the crazy one. 
It was uh, the main guy. What was his name? It was uh, shoot. What was his name? I forget. Murdoch's the crazy one? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Murdoch um, was the crazy one. He flew the helicopter. Yeah, sorry. It was brain farting there. Why am I not remembering the main guy? Oh, no, no, it was Murdoch. No, Face was the crazy That's one. That's what I thought. I was. Oh, no, 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 he went, no, the crazy no, one was... Face is Face. Face is Face. Murdoch was the main guy. Was it Hannibal? Yeah, uh, yes. And then, uh, but the crazy one wasn't any of those. <laughs> the crazy one was, uh, what was his name? Yeah, no, Howling Mad Murdoch is... Yeah, he was the main guy, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Hannibal's the guy that says I love him. Oh, Hannibal, that's Murdoch right. is the crazy one. All right. Yeah, I can't remember anything. I watch that show every week, too. Of course, I was... How old would I have been? I was in high school. dun 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 <laughs> and they all remember uh, those TV shows back then. They all followed their own formula every week. Like, like when you watch The Incredible Hulk, he turned into the Hulk twenty minutes in every show, and then turned into the Hulk again at the end in the climax. And in the A Team, they always had the big. They're going to make a some kind of contraption montage every week. Mr. T, he was afraid to fly, so they had to figure out how to knock him out. I'm guessing Dukes of Fazer was having at least one jump per show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they destroyed a car every show, at least. <laughs> this one's got to go to the shop. But it's broken in half. I lo and it's funny, because as a kid, I loved you know, being able to anticipate where you were so you knew you weren't going to miss anything you know every time I The Incredible Hulk was my favorite show on TV when it was on that one in the six million dollar man and so I, I knew I could go to the bathroom and I wouldn't miss anything because it's you know we're only ten minutes in or something don't make me angry you wouldn't like me when I'm angry was Mulan the first film animated in Florida Yes. Well, no, it wasn't. Well, it was the first film completely done in Florida. But, I mean, we, we animated a lot of films in Florida. But we were a part of the California crew. You know, we did Beauty and the Beast. We did uh, Aladdin. We did The Lion King. We did Hunchback. We did Hercules. Uh, uh, what, what's the llama one? The... Uh, The oh, llama, uh, uh, Cusco uh, and all that. Dustin, you know. What's the llama movie? Emperor's New Groove. Emperor's, Emperor's, Emperor's New Groove. We did that one. Parts of that. A whole bunch the of groove. them. Tarzan. Lilo and Stitch was completely done in Florida. And then Brother Bear was completely done in Florida. So those are the three. It was Mulan, Lilo and Stitch, and then Brother Bear. Isn't animation exciting? <laughs> oh, so exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's got... It's got if you turn the channel, there. you can look at our other show, Watching Paint Peel. <laughs> turn turn to Channel watching 3, paint Watching dry. Grass Grow. <laughs> oh, look at that. Had a whole bunch hidden down on the bottom, didn't know it. Bam, 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 bam. I've got a team stuck in my head now. <laughs> I always feel like. <laughs> oh, you know what classic film I watched last night? Huh? Dirty Harry. Oh, yeah. 
Now, I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? <laughs> You know what? I think he's moving too slow through here. I'm going to put these on fours. Four. Four. Let's see how that plays. I still love that uh, that story of yours of meeting uh, Clint Eastwood. Meeting Clint at the uh, Oscars. And, and I can just picture the whole moment in my head. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the drinks, drinks are free. Are free. <laughs> Uh, who animated Dr. Better. Facilier in uh, Princess of the Frog? Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith is a freaking genius animator. Yeah, the, the song that uh, Facilier has, uh, Friends on the Other Side, yeah. is probably one of my favorite. Isn't that awesome? Favorite. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, it's the one song I sing along, sing along to when I watch the movie. Bruce also animated Kerchek. Kerchek. Yeah, in Tarzan. Oh, the um, the, the elephant. No, the father, the father gorilla. Oh, that's Kerchak. Yeah. What, what was the young elephant's name? I forgot. Oh, I can't remember. That was uh, oh, the young elephant. That was animated by Sergio Pablos, who has Did his own. The... He's the director of of Klaus. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so let's take this now. Let's go ahead and export it. A uh, YouTube question while you're doing that. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about learning to draw new animals. Do you approach it by studying the anatomy from the mo bones and muscles and all the details outwards, or do you approach it by focusing on the basics? I, I basic well, it's both really. You know, I, I I really approach it by looking at the exterior shapes. What you know, what are the shapes on the outside of the animal? But then I also want to understand why the shapes are the way they are, how the muscular how the muscles work how those muscles sit on the bones, so just so that I'm understanding the shape changes that I'm gonna see on the outside. So it's really thinking about it from both directions. Um, so yeah, I, it's kind of, I work on the, I work from the outside, from the inside out, and the outside in, and kind of meet in the middle. All right, so there's yeah. our, there's a very rough first pass. And you know, when I would get to a stage like this, if I was working on a production at Disney, it's at this stage that I would go and take this and show it to the director. and Because uh, they know that at, after this stage, you can tie it down and you can add the in-betweens. So the, the whole idea is, is to get efficiency and try to get, you know, try to get that work done so that you can get the, we can meet our quotas and get the production done on time. So anytime I can get something roughed out quickly like this and then show it to the director, um, that way, by the end of the week, I can have everything, you know, uh, 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 tied down and in between. So now let's go. Uh, I'm going to jump back over to Premiere. Oh, Premiere hasn't even. It's it's still it's stuck. It never quit. I I tried to quit it and it never did. And Castro helped out. Uh, the elephant's name is actually yeah. I have to force quit it. That's the other thing it's doing, Nick. Hmm. Is I'll go to quit it and it just gets hung up and it doesn't quit. Yeah, there's something going on with Premiere. I'm not sure. It won't quit unless I force quit it. But it's, it's, I don't know if it's because we upgraded to the newest one or not. I don't know. Mm, I mean, it's optimized for those M1 Macs now. They've got an M1 Mac version, and that's what you're using, so it should be working properly. So I'm not quite sure. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now, I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to move this snow up. And the section that I just did is going to go right in here. If you can see my, my mouse... It's going to go right in this little section, right here. This snow overlay is going to go up here, and I'm going to import. This is how we basically build it shot by shot. I'm going to go to animation, and I'm going to go into A10, and we're going to take that. That's our rough export right there, and you can see it pop up in my, in my bin right here. So there it is. I run my mouse over it. There's the one before it and here's the one after. So I just take it and I drag it over and it goes right here. Just like that. So you'll Jeez, see the sure. fox run away and then it cuts to him right there. Now I gotta I gotta get a little more um, 
I got to get in there a little bit tighter. Make sure that we're in the right spot here. Yeah, see there's a little. I missed it by just a, by just a hair. By just a hair. Yeah, by one frame. Scoot that over one frame. Scoot this over one frame. I'm going to lose this. And I'm going to put a cross, cross dissolve on the clip, not on the clip, sorry, on the, uh, I'm going to highlight this, and then go into uh, my effects, which is, where am I, oh, i got to go into window, effects, there they are, and get my video transitions, uh, right here, dissolve, cross dissolve, we're going to put that right there, and we're going to, I'm going to lengthen that dissolve to right about here. Right there. So now, remember it was story sketch before. Now when we play this back, we see the fox. He's excited. And the fox no, says, nope, I'm running away. And then he's like, oh, and turns and walks off. And we cross dissolve to the next shot. So that's how you can see how, you know, slowly everything cuts together. Let me back up a little bit more. So now you'll see the whole, the whole section. He comes in, he's excited because he sees the fox. The fox stands up and goes, hmm, who is this guy? Has a look, he gets excited, hey guy. He goes, nope, that's a polar bear, forget it. And he runs off. I'm out. And he's like, oh, and then he turns and walks away. So that's us establishing, okay, he's having a hard time. The first thing I want to establish in this story is environment. This is the Arctic. It's cold and it's lonely. It's big. So we do that. Then we introduce our, our polar bear into that environment. We see he's this lone character walking in a big landscape. That's what the first few shots are in this thing. And then as he's walking along, then we introduce the fox. We see, okay, he's a lonely guy and he wants to make a friend, but then the fox runs away. And we're going to have him do this a couple of times with other characters before he decides to make a snow bear. But that's kind of how the story, how the onion peels away and we reveal little bits of our character. You know, we want to establish that environment first, then our character, and then our character's wants. And our character's wants are he wants to make a friend. And, you just can't seem to do it. So there you go. One more time, you can see the, the continuity. Hello. The continuity. Planning on bringing this to the Annecy Festival? I would love to see it here. Uh, we would love to. I mean, that, part of our goal is to get it done in time. If we if we can get it done in time, for sure. If we can't this year, maybe we'll do it next year. I'm, I'm not sure if we can go a whole year. Um, between that's what we're shooting for that's but our the, goal yeah our goal is to have it done in time for Annecy next year oh it's gonna happen it's a lot to get done and we're shooting for it and uh, so we'll see now here's a section this is something else I want to point out to you guys here's a section when the Fox comes walking forward that's an example of ones you'll see it starts to get really super fluid I'm hoping you can see the fluidity on your end. So he comes forward, and then watch when the fox comes down right through here. That's all on ones. It gets really fluid through there. And then he smiles, and then right when he runs out, that's all on ones as well. Oh, and walks away. Do you have any tips on finding good reference? Uh, if you're talking about video reference, there's two things you can do. You can look at YouTube. I do that, or you shoot it yourself, and I do that as well. So you t if you're talking about video reference for animation, it's, it's YouTube. If you're talking about photographic reference for doing your own images, then the first choice is to shoot it yourself, uh, or you can go into Google Images and, and look stuff up, but just don't copy what you find. You just use it as you know, basic reference. Uh Twitch question, any plans on for the Brother Bear 20th anniversary next year? I can't believe it's already the 20th anniversary. It feels like we just celebrated the 15th anniversary. Yeah, I know. No, 
I don't have any plans. We'll probably do something special for ourselves. Yeah, we'll do something on last year at the fifteenth anniversary. We did a special brother bear stream, and people liked it a lot. So maybe we'll do something. Uh, yeah. How does somebody make money at short films? You don't. You don't. It's not really. It's one of the reasons we're turning this into a course. Yeah, we'll make a course all about how to create a short film from beginning to end. That's one way we have the ability to monetize it. Uh, but generally speaking, short films are not... You, if you have a, a body of them, there's something there that could be marketed. You know, it's how Netflix put together Love, Death, and Robots. You know, that's all a, a, you know, a whole series of short films. Uh, um, but, but generally, you know, the short... Sub, although... I have a theory. A lot of times they're a stepping stone to then get larger projects. Yeah, but I, I just, I think with TikTok and just social media in general, I think people's attention spans are getting shorter. And I think there might be a market for shorts in the future, more of a market than what we've seen in the past. I think Jeffrey Katzenberg and his, uh, Quibi. What, was it? what was it, Quibi? Yeah, it bombed. Yeah, I know it bombed. I think it was too early. I think it's the right idea. I just think it wasn't it wasn't ready yet. Yeah, but I just don't see how it's any different. I mean, people have been putting shorts out on YouTube forever. Well, that's the thing. Maybe well, I guess the idea behind it is the content is right. Being able to monetize it the way he did is probably not the right thing. Yeah, I mean, if you want to watch animated shorts, they're all over YouTube and all over Vimeo and all that stuff. I just, you know, you can make ad revenue from it that way that's one way you can do it if it gets really popular but like i don't think you're going to make feature film money off of shorts ever no but i mean there's ways of building a channel i think yeah, exactly. and, and creating yeah. content yep. which is something that we you know we would love to do in the future is you know on our on our whether it's you know wherever you access us as a whether it's YouTube or our site, we want to be a content site so you, in the future so you guys can come and, and watch animated content. That's something we're shooting to do over the next several years. Uh, Martin Berger asks, isn't it uh, difficult to work on a project with temporary music and voices, et cetera, for so long and then see the final version? Uh, yes and no. Um, temporary voices usually really suck. <laughs> and so there's been a very few times where we've gotten a temporary voice in and we go, you know what? We love that voice. Let's keep it. It has happened. You know, the, uh, in the movie Bolt? Yeah. Uh, the hamster? Yeah, he was. A, he, he was, was one of the story guys. But he was so good, they just said, you know, we're going to keep him. And, uh. But that doesn't happen very often. Now, as far as music goes, yeah, I mean, it, it, it can really hit you hard when you get the final music in and you've gotten used to, you know, I know in, in like in Lion King, when we were making the, when making the Lion King, the section where Mufasa dies and Simba's trying to wake him up and, you know, that whole section through there. Spoiler alert. Yeah, right. That whole section through there, they used the mission score. And we got so used to it, and it was so emotional. I mean, so sad. And to this day, when I hear the mission score, actually, I use the mission in, in, in different parts of animation that I've used in the past, and just because it's such a strong score. And um, it's when we replaced it with the final score, it was kind of a letdown. But the 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 uh, the mission is used all over the place. People, you know, in, in temporary animation and temporary scores for different films. And then there's other times where it really it gets really improved. And obviously, that's the goal. You don't want you don't want to ride, you piggyback somebody else's score. But we uh, we really want to come up with a nice score for this. 
So that's our, our goal on that. I Any forgot. Sorry. I just, nothing, I, I just forgot a little section here. Any advice for when you encounter block a block on a tight uh, project? I recently had the worst block ever boarding a short. I eventually got out of it, but do you have any advice for boarding to avoid that? No. I mean, it's uh, for boarding, it's, you know, look at other films, look at whatever it's going to take. I mean, but we have getting a block in boarding, it's, sometimes you just can't, you just got to walk away. I guess that's my advice. Walk away for a little while and look at things that inspire you uh, because that's, what am I doing here? I'm looking at something weird. Oh, there's the drawing right there. Um, that's, uh, that's tough, man. And, I, and I've had lots of, lots of uh, times where I've, I've, you know, I needed to animate a shot or storyboard a shot and I just have no clue what I'm gonna do. Um, but I've been doing this for 30 some odd years and I've learned you don't fight it, you know, it's going to come to you. And so I would walk away, just walk away. And that's part of the process. Some people start feeling guilty, like, oh man, I'm not doing the work. Actually, you are, you're, you're, you're priming the pump, you know, you're getting ready to go. And that's, you know, ideas don't always just, we're not machines ideas don't always just pop into your head you've got to you got to find them you got to work it out you got to uh, it's 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 a process and so i learned early on hey it's okay to have a little rubber band fight between shots it's okay to go out and get an ice cream before you start the next one it's okay to go out and take a walk in the woods you know to contemplate that next shot or not contemplate it maybe you just need to clear your head so that, those are the things that I've learned to do. Yeah, in fact, uh, going for a walk and clearing your head uh, will help you with your uh, struggle with Raja. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the AI Dolly? I don't know, it's spelled like Wally, but it's Dolly, and it, uh, it makes art. I don't know if you've seen this, Aaron. I actually saw it and played around with it a little bit. And what do you think about it? I've seen it. I just haven't done it. I think it's interesting. It's kind of neat. You can actually pretty much type in anything and it'll create an image of that from scratch. But your mileage kind of varies. Like some stuff, it's like, wow, I that's amazing. And some stuff you're like, oh, that looks like crap. Yeah. I saw one that Loish did that she typed in her name to see what it would do. And it produced, it produced an image that kind of looked like her style. It was cool. And then she built off of it and finished it off as, as if she would do it. It was kind of, it was kind of cool. She had that posted on social media. You want to mention our sale and everything going on right now? Yeah, absolutely. For people just joining us, uh, we've got a summer sale going over at Creature Art Teacher where everything is 30% off or more. Uh, that's all of our brushes, lessons, and courses. But the biggest sale we've ever had right now on memberships is also going on. If you go to CreatureArtTeacher.com right now and you buy an annual membership, you'll also be able to gift one to a friend or family member or loved one for free. So basically buy one get one on annual premium memberships at creatureartteacher.com and that gets you absolutely everything on the website to keep you can stream it download it keep it forever it's yours to keep plus everything we come out with over the next year and both accounts get all of the um, uh, privileges of those memberships so uh, head on over to creatureartteacher.com check it out and uh, check it out. It's now. the biggest deal that we've ever had. And plus, you're also going to get exclusive behind the scenes access to the making of Snow Bear as we continue to make this project moving forward. Today's kind of a teaser of that. But exactly. Not, yeah. And if you already are a member, you can renew early and still take advantage of this promotion. So, so I'm going to be finishing up here in a few minutes, but. Um, I just wanted you guys to see kind of the process. This is a, a very simple shot. I'm, it's not an easy shot, obviously. You can see there's a lot of work even in simple shots. Um, but I wanted you to see that process. I'm going to be doing uh, 
moving on after this shot is done, I'll be moving on to the whale section, which I gave you a little taste of. You're going to get to see our polar bear swimming with orcas. And I'll be animating that over the next month. But you got to be a member of the site in order to see that. Um, but I'll be, you know, you'll be able to tune in with me pretty much each morning once we have it all set up. And um, you'll see me struggle through it and swear and everything else. <laughs> I'll try to keep my, I'll try to keep it clean. No guarantees. But, uh, you know, a lot of times you, all you all you guys see is the end result of what we do. You don't see the struggle. And uh, and a lot of it is, uh, is struggle. <laughs> the struggle is real. The struggle is very real. I have animated things you would not believe. <laughs> You even got the pause in there. Very good. <laughs> I was just thinking about the what's this? What's this? <laughs> a particular word in there I cannot say on that. <laughs> There's both up everywhere. <laughs> I'll just say that. We, we were trying, yeah, we were trying to find, we were trying to find some equipment earlier. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? There's bull crap everywhere. What's this? There's bull crap in my head. What's this? What's the name and the size of the brush you're using in TV Paint? This is just the 2B pencil built into TV Paint, Yeah, this right? is their 2B pencil. And uh, it works just like a pencil, looks like a pencil. That's why I like it. Um, and right now, the size, what size is it? It's 54%. I don't know what that means. Is it, is it a... See? Oh, is that what it <laughs> That's my stylus. <laughs> no, it's, it's the brush I'm using in TV paint. Uh -huh. uh, question. I thought it was a uh, pencil-looking stylus. No. Do you work on... Uh, your animated film all in one file or is it separated files by scene? It's separated. They are separated files by shot. Yep, by shot. Yeah, the, and the, I've, and I've got, unwield, you, the project would be gargantuan. You wouldn't be able to open the file. Yeah, let me show you. I'll give you an example. Um, let me open up. Like right here, here's my background. I've got, we've got a production folder. Within our production folder, we have separate folders. We have animation, backgrounds, color, reels, rough layout, storyboards, all of that. Uh, also, you can see some of the rough scores that I have in here. Now, within backgrounds, uh, these are the shots that have been completed so far, right here. So let's go to, to our establishing shot, the very first shot in the production. So here's, here, here's what the background looks like with all of the layers. So that's the finished background. And you can see it's a lot wider because we have a, a pan that we do or a, a truck. Uh, we move across the shot. Okay, but that's the finished production background. Uh, but then we have, well, let me just click through. Then we have set up in different layers. There's a color model. And these are all different layers because these different layers actually make up the actual shot. And I actually, um, as part of the course, when we make the course at the end, I actually uh, recorded the making of this. So if I scroll through, you can see the making of that background, how I made it. So you can see that there. So I'm, I'm saving little bits like that. Um, shot two, here's, you know, there's a shot, a finished background for shot two. Here's shot three. There's the finished background. Oh, that's one of the layers. Let me show you a color. I think I have a color model. Here's a color model of shot three. So that's the finished background, snow overlay. The bear walking in, this is the first time we see our bear. And then the title will come up over the top of that. But there's three different layers that make up this shot. So you'll get a sense, you know, there's your idea, there's your, there's a, a, A5. So there's a background. Let me show you here. There's a background. There's the color model. That's what the bear looks like walking in with the fox. There's the background itself. 
Um, they're, they're, they're the different layers, all the different layers that make up the shot. So, and then animation, I've got the actual um, animation files. Like in the first shot, if I go to A1, let me open up A1. I'll just open, I'll click on that. And so imagine I showed you that first shot with the mountains in the background. Actually, I can turn them on. I think I have them in here. Maybe I don't. I guess I don't. I don't have them in here. But in the very beginning, it's super, super windy. It's like hurricane force winds. And so I animated the grass really blowing like it's, you know, hey, Dustin, it's can super you, Sorry, Dustin, can you hide your dad so that people can see the timeline? Because he's showing all the layers and stuff. Yeah, so you can see all the, all the layers for the grass. So all the grass has different timing. And it's very jerky because it's like super windy, blowy wind. And then when you put the sound effect of wind over the top of it, it works really well. So, that's, so we keep everything very, very organized in different files. So as we move forward, you know, in shot three, I've got animation in there. Um, let me open that one up, you'll see. So in this one, this is just this layer, but this is where our bear comes walking in. You can see all the drawings down here. And this is where he comes walking in. The first time we ever reveal him, this is the first time we see him, and he comes walking down the shot, and then he stops, looks around, and stands up. And then we cut in tight on him looking around. So this is the first introduction of Snow Bear. So we keep all these little pieces, and then it all gets cut together in the actual reel. But when I'm actually working on it, let's say, like right here, when I was actually working on this, I was working at it, you know, I blow it, I blow it way up. Whoops. There it is. And I'd work on it about this scale. Maybe a little smaller than that. Work on it about that scale and just kind of work my way down. But this is 4K. This is all done in 4K. So there you go. So every shot has its own file. Uh, every shot has its own uh, animation, has its own file. Background has its own file. All of that. And then as we finish shots, they'll have their own files as well. So hopefully that explains it all to you. Where was my shot? There it is, A10. The key to something this big is organization. You've got to keep it organized, otherwise you're, you're just going to implode. And one of the keys to keeping it organized is the numbering, whatever numbering system you have. You've got to make it really clear. Like we've got our, we've gone through and we've broken up Snow Bear into four sections. So there's A, B, C, and D. So right now we're working on the A section. And then each section is numbered from one to whatever. So this is shot A10. Exactly. And it, I think it goes up to A40 something. There might be 40 shots, I think. I can't remember. In this first section. Might be even more than that. And then when we get to B, it'll be B1. It'll start over again. But you'll be in the B section. How, do you remember how many shots there were in the whole thing? Not off the top of my head, but I can tell you in one second. Hold on. Total number of shots. I want to say it was 116, but I, that might be way off.
Hold on, sorry, I'm looking at. Gotta add them up. Real quick. I don't have the uh, the PDF that I did handy, but I'm. Uh... Yeah, I, I don't have our printouts. I don't know what I did with the printout. No, I've got the. Uh, I just don't have it handy on this laptop. That's that's the problem. But I'm. Oh, I just found it. No, nope, that's the scans. Just add these up real quick. I'll tell you one second. Oh, you got the four sections? Yeah. I'm getting 114. 114. Okay, yeah. sorry, I was close. So there's 114 shots all together in the entire short. And so far, I'm up to shot 10. Now, I got to admit, the shots up to this point have been fairly easy. We're going to have some pretty complex shots coming up. How long do you spend on each frame? Didn't we figure out to hit our goal? How often do you have to be doing a drawing? I've got to do a drawing every 10 minutes on average to hit our, to hit our goal. Right now, I'm ahead of schedule. But I have to do one, because I need to do about a little over 13,000 drawings for the entire short. And we broke it down for time for 10 months, working 40 hours a week, all of that. It broke down to about one drawing for every 10 minutes. Right now, I'm doing a drawing about every 20 minutes. So, but I've, I've banked a lot of drawings coming in. I'm actually ahead of schedule, so... That's going to help. Now, the next section I get into with the whales, I'm going to get way behind schedule. And so the whole rest of the production, I'll be playing catch up through the whole rest of it to hit our goal. So there you can see him. It's relatively smooth, his, his sadness, that droop in his face. Remember, this just started with two drawings, the happy face and then the sad face. And you just kind of work towards, you just keep adding drawings and you work towards that end goal. Now what I want to do here, let's just add a drawing. Let's do this. I wanted to change the timing just a touch. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to come up here and we're going to go, all right, let's add, let's put a drawing there. Then I'm going to put a drawing right there. I'm going to turn that light on and we're going to go here. There we go. So. I want to add a, an in-between here. I'm going to go a little rougher with it. I'm going to knock that opacity down. Whoops. I went right off the page. There we go. Uh, not, where is my opacity? Right there. And I'm going to go right there. Let's make that. Let's do it on that layer. So I can keep it rough. Rough. So all these drawings that you see on this second timeline, I've actually got to redraw all of those. Because I'm keeping these really super rough right now. Because I just want to get the placement of them right. And then I can just go in and turn on my music and draw. What kind of moral support helps you in a project... Uh like this moral support I, I need everyone going okay you can do it Aaron <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the, the, you can kind of do it <laughs> no I mean just the idea of the anticipation of getting it done that's my 
That's my support. The excitement of getting it done. The excitement of, I know, I've been through the process enough that I know how it's going to be when it's done. And that's what gets me super excited. I know what's gonna, what it's going to be like. The, the leap that a project makes from story sketch to finish is huge. And I'm, I, even to this day, I still get blown away because you get so used to the story sketch stage. And right now we're used to Snow Bear as the story sketch stage. And there's, you can't even compare the story sketch stage to the finish movie. It's just, it's so cool to see that transition. That's what I get excited about. Every time we finish a new shot and cut it in, we're that much closer. And that's my fuel every morning. I can't wait. I get excited to get up, get out of the shower, get downstairs and, and start working. Will you ever do a video or class on how to set up, plan and organize your pipeline? I struggle to estimate how long something like that should take and I would love a course on it. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's an actual course. We could definitely do some videos on it. Well, I think it might, that might end up being part of our Snow Bear yeah, course I think it, when we're all I think it is going to be part of it because we, we did schedule this out. We had some help from a, my friend Dom Carolla. He helped us figure out the timing on it because um, at one time we were looking at maybe hiring artists to come in and help with rough in between and that sort of thing but which is still a possibility if if the timeline gets tight or you know we're, yeah there's still we're trying to be as flexible as as we can yeah but after talking with dom we realized you know maybe this is something we want to do on our own and you know use our money elsewhere on save other some parts. money for post-production yeah score. exactly you know the, one of the biggest expenses we're going to have on this is the score getting a composer and uh, so I want to make sure that we're saving enough money for that as well. So speaking of which, head on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com <laughs> and sign up for a membership And today. help support us. Help support our movie. Right now we're running a buy one, gift, gift one free sale on annual premium memberships. This is the biggest sale we have ever run on memberships on the website. You get ac immediate access to over 500 hours of courses, and it's really almost 600 hours um uh videos thousands of brushes photo packs artist reference photo packs you get uh behind the scene peeks at snow bear you get uh access to our upcoming discord channel uh you get discounts on all of our physical merchandise our live workshops and events that we do in person our online workshops and events that we do a couple times a year uh it really is what we like to call the best value in art education so uh, right now is the best time to take advantage of it. You can sign up, you can buy one, and gift one free. So you can give one to a loved one, or, you know, if you have a friend and you guys want to go in on it, you know, split the cost. It's the same, it's the same thing. It's like getting two memberships for the price of one, however you look at it. And as someone just said on Twitch, you'll help us keep the lights on in Studio Blaze. That's right. <laughs> Wouldn't an in-betweener help? Yes, and we've talked about that. So that was one of the things we looked at was, you know, maybe Aaron doing all the keys or maybe, you know, we have people come in and in-betweener. So we, we had a bunch of meetings on that. So for now, we're going to stick with Aaron doing everything and we might adjust as the production goes on yeah if i can if i can the basically it comes down to whether or not i can keep up with the schedule yeah so we'll continue to have meetings and production meetings and we're we're going to be constantly checking sort of we have a project production calendar that we've put together and we're going to be sort of assessing where we're at in the process if we're still on target for where we need to be then we won't need to bring in additional hands if it turns out that Hey, we're running behind schedule. Okay, is it? We'll assess at that point. Is it? Okay, is it? Are we so far behind that we can't catch up? Is this a a, a deal breaker? What, what ends up happening? So, right. You know, we're gonna. It's it's a production, so we're gonna treat it as such, and and we're gonna adjust as we go. So I think. 
So far, so good. Oh, this is a great question someone asked. If I buy a membership, does the gifted one immediately become activated? I want to buy it for a friend's birthday in December and don't want them missing out on some months. No, actually, uh, you can schedule when you want that delivered and it's good from the day they activate it. So if you want to send it to them on their birthday, that's an option right when you check out. So. Yeah, it's not from the day that you purchase it. It's from the day that they activate it. So what happens is, is your gift recipient gets a digital code to activate their membership. And that code, you can schedule the date and time that they get that. So there we go. So there's our rough, our first rough pass of our snow bear getting sad and kind of turning and walking out. There's a couple of wonky drawings in here that I'm going to be right here where his head let me turn these off cancel the project wonky drawings i'm out <laughs> just <laughs> the head turn in here gets a little that, it's like, like this drawing right here i gotta fix that note which one this sorry one. there's a lag so this one right here gotcha that one the the eye you see the see where the eyes are with the bridge of the nose mm -hmm. see where the eye is with the bridge of the nose there mm -hmm. see where the eye is with the bridge of the nose there his eyes have dropped too low mm. actually i can fix that right now do you there, I just, I just did it. That's the one that kills me. Yeah, that plays a little better. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Someone just said, so technically you could activate that gift membership next year and use it as your, as your own. Shh. Yes. <laughs> Shh. Yes, you could. There you go, animation. We just made some drawings that move. So that's the biggest thing about animation. I always talk about, you know, animation's not about moving stuff. Animation's about bringing, you know, whoa, what's happening there? What did I do? Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Like, How many look, drawings look, look, look are Look at you? the eye. See the eye shift? I did it on the wrong. I did it, I did it on the wrong. Uh, I did. I got to do this. Boop. There you go. Oh, I see. By the way, David Nethery has been watching, who's an expert in TV paint, and he sent us a nice little note, Aaron, about a couple of things we might want to think about. Oh, good. Thank you, David. Actually, yeah, it might, I might pull you in to get some advice. And we Funny, because I was thinking about that yesterday, and then we did this from stream From a production today. standpoint, yep. yeah. So, so there we go. There you be. Yeah, because um, you know, one of the things, David, if you're still watching... Um, we're not we're not doing any compositing or any cutting together. I'm just strictly doing my shots in TV paint. That I'm doing all my all my moves, all of my uh, compositing and cutting and everything in Premiere. So uh, um, anyway, just because it's that's what I'm used to. But there we go. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We've been at this for about two and a half hours now. But look, this is what you can get done in two and a half hours. I had the setup ready to go but basically we've got a shot uh, and this is a four foot shot uh, which is uh, four feet what is that it's a so six so four feet not four feet it's four seconds not four not four feet four seconds so this is a four second shot um, every you second you should explain that to people because that is such an old school term that oh yeah you I, think I, that I, way I, but I know I forget so back back in the day we um, when we would do our shots we, because everything was done on film, we didn't do stuff digitally, and so film was always measured in footage. How how you know how many feet the, the the film is, and so when you get a shot, we would get a shot that's say ten feet and eight frames, or you know twenty feet, fourteen frames. Every foot was sixteen frames. So if you have twenty four frames, that's one second. So every foot and a half was one second. Okay, so every three, you know, you do three feet, there's two seconds. Four and a half feet, there's three seconds. You know, that sort of thing. 
And so here I have four, I have four seconds, <clears throat> so there's six feet. This is a four second shot at six feet of film. So that's, and I still think in footage. As a matter of fact, there's no reason to, but I just automatically do. So the question, so you guys would actually think in feet, which yeah, is because so weird our, to me. And it's funny because I never even, never even connected the dots at the, the term footage. Well, it's just, it's just how the, that, that's how the movie, that's how our, our exposure sheets were laid out in footage. Mm -hmm. So you had no choice but to do that. And so every foot and a half was one second of film and then you just kind of work your way through. You know, the first page was always, to what, three and a half feet. And then, you know, each page after that was four and a half feet or not, not three and a half, two and a half feet. Anyway. Um, yeah, and so you would just uh, work your way through that way. And so it's just, yeah, that's just interesting to me because I don't think coming from a digital age, if you would never, someone now that started today, imagining that never happened, would never come up with that terminology. Cause it would well, be it's like, interesting because the footage, when you, when you look at time on, when you look at time on Premiere, the way I get my, and this is how I get my, my lengths now, um, it, it's, it's still measured by frames and right. time, but I see I equate frames and footage together as well. So it fe to me, it feels like a little bit of an overlap. So like this shot, I think uh, exactly was f uh, four seconds, or not four, yeah, four seconds, eight frames, because it's based on 24, every second is 24, it's, it's a base 24 is what it is. So it's four seconds, eight frames long. So I, I would go in and, and I'd work that out. So, you know, each second's 24 frames. You multiply that and plus you add the, you add the four and you come up with your total or you add your eight frames or whatever and you come up with your total. I've got 103, 103 frames for the whole thing. Or yeah, 103, 104, whatever it is. But that's how we go through it. I look at each shot and I measure out the timing for each one in seconds and then figure it out by frames but there you go uh so there's a rough shot figured out and um i just have to go through now and tie this down but at least we've got something roughed out and it's cut into the reel and now we can see it in continuity let me show you one more time how it looks in continuity i don't have it quite the same as oh did it freeze up already uh -oh. did yep, you it's frozen it? Had you saved it? No. Nope. So I'll have to quit out. Actually, let me export the latest version. It doesn't take long. So let me export. Export to. Uh, it's already in the yeah. same folder. Export. And it's already, it's automatically overwriting the old one. Because I didn't change the name. So it overwrites that. You just got to wait a little bit for it to export. There you go. It's done. Let me open up Premiere again. Takes a little bit to do that. We're going to open up our last project. Bada boom, bada bing. Bada bing, bada bing. Okay. And then we'll go to File. Uh, import and we're going to go to A10 movie mp4 import that there it is and actually we, we do have the old one in there and we got the new one right here for 408 <coughs> let me see here if this is in the right spot there's a nine. Oh, it is there I did save. Okay, I did save it. So there's that. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to bring this one in. This new one. And let's get a little closer to it. Get a little closer. And let's go into our effects. And our video transitions are dissolve. Yeah, someone's pointing this out. You can, you know, you can also just right click and go replace footage. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. See, you learn something new every day. All right, so there you go. So let me back up a little bit. Let me back up to. Let's 
back up to here. So he's walking in, sees our fox, gets excited. Can you go full screen on that? Oh yeah. Or Sorry, let it, me. Will it chop it? Oh shoot! I may have just screwed it up. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. Oh no, no, it's good. We do this. Oh, you screwed it up. Sorry, man. Uh -oh. Let me save it. Was it was just an idea. All right, let me. I can quit out of it and open it back up. For some reason, we've got something happening with, with. Uh, OBS. Or BS, yes. No, I, I, I think it's something like with the scratch disc or something. I can't figure out what it is. I gotta, I didn't have at least time. it quit that time. Someone just wrote, Nick, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, but I did save it, so I don't have to redo all that stuff. I'll let it play into the whales a little bit. No, just a touch. No, not all of it. No. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't. Just to entice them, because no, 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 you're no. only gonna see it. Oops, hold on. Oh. So here he is. See there. And we see our fox coming in. Turns, runs away. Oh, he's sad. And then we see our whales under the thing. But now that you're not going to see, you're not going to see him interacting with the whales. You'll just see, oh, now he's underwater, but you're not going to see what's going to happen after that. We get there to see him go. standing on the ice from underwater, but we don't know what's going to happen next. You got to tune in to see that. See, that's all I wanted to do. I just nice. Wanted to no, that's perfect. just wanted to Sorry. tease it. No, you, you nailed it. You nailed it. So yeah. I'm, I'm actually excited just to do this shot. This shot's going to be fun because... You're going to see him kind of blurred and stuff through the ice. We went back up. and forth on this shot, too, trying to get this right. This took a long time yeah, to get the Yeah, trying to, right. get the, the, to get the cutting to work right. To but the, the, right. the key was to show the whales right here. See, the, the whales kind of clear the shot. So we cut on the action. We're looking at it from above. The whales are there swimming away. Then we cut underneath, and they clear the shot. And then you see him standing there, and something happens after that. Yeah, and that's what we, we, we originally, to get the cut to work right, it was like a weird jump cut, so it took a while to figure that all out. It's yeah, cool. we've restaged that, that whole section. We've restaged it several times. Which is all going to be... Frozen up again. Frozen up again. Which is all going to be part of the course. So when we, uh, in addition to the behind the scenes stuff, where we'll be going over a lot more of this stuff in detail for our annual members, we're going to make a course out of this entire you know how basically how to make an animated short from beginning to end it's going to be the entire pipeline but we want to talk a lot about the missteps and the redos and this and that yeah you know do yeah. the thing now, i do have to admit it's you know working digitally is much more efficient but paper never freezes up on you <laughs> paper never crashes on you so you do have that um, and you don't, unless someone throws it away in the garbage, you never lose paper. <laughs> or unless if uh, somebody pours water on it by accident. Yeah, but even then it's salvageable. So, but anyway, there's, uh, there's shot 10 roughed out in our big scheme of things out of 114 shots that are going to be done eventually on Snow Bear. And if you want to see me do more of this on a daily basis, you're going to be able to come in and, and watch over my shoulder then join up to our, to our website, creatureartteacher.com. And not only are you going to get to see me animate and draw and, and, and create this, this short, you're going to get all kinds of lessons along with it, too. So you're not just getting studio access, you're getting educational access as well. And we're going to continue over the next year. We're going to be adding courses. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm doing this, but we've got uh, other uh, artists that are going to be creating courses. And I might take a break and step away and do another course or two along the way. Yeah, we've got way. more animation courses. We've got more concept art courses, more, yeah, tra more traditional media exactly. courses coming. So, yeah, we've got tons of stuff. And anything new that we do over the next year, if you remember, you automatically get those as they come available, as, they, as, as we release them. So you don't have to pay extra. So you're not just getting what we have now if you become a member. You're getting whatever we release over the next year as well. So it's a pretty good deal, I think. 
I think it's the best deal in online art education. I, I agree. <laughs> Nick? <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today. I had a blast. We have to get going. I'm getting married in a week. And uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so I'm getting married a week from tomorrow to uh, my lovely Vedanta, who was in here earlier. And I have nothing to wear. So we got to go clothes shopping. So uh, and Nick is actually going to be uh, doing the, our, our officiating. Yes, I'll be performing the He's ceremony. Ordained. Nick is ordained. Ordained. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so we're doing that next week. So we got a lot to do. So I'm going to sign off. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a blast. And uh, so have a great weekend. Stay safe. Going out. Put some beauty back into the world. Create some beautiful art. Make somebody else's life better. Put your shopping cart away. And I'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Later. Bye, everybody. Cowboy and Bebop. <laughs>